you can have your shortcuts change your watch face and things like that now. Combine that with the time-based automations and you can have your watch face update in the morning or at night or based on other triggers like that. So that stuff is really, really cool. Sponsored by Curiosity Stream, now bundled with my streaming service, Nebula. Siri Shortcuts, one of the biggest, nerdiest, most awesome updates iOS, iPadOS, and watchOS are getting this year. And they barely got any attention at all in the keynote. But I can fix that because joining me today is Matthew Castanelli, who, long story short, was one of the original members of the workflow team brought into Apple, but who left just before they became shortcuts so he could share his expertise with all the rest of us on the outside. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. So if people aren't familiar with shortcuts, I always go back to that old line. If you have to do something more than twice, you should automate it. For me, it lets me connect together the things that I do on my phone and then turn them into one tap shortcuts, either using that directly on the phone or now on Apple Watch, which is cool, and also through Siri and things like that. So it does all the grunt work that a human doesn't want to do and does it faster and better than a human could do it. Exactly. So Apple introduced them a couple of years ago and they've been steadily improving them every year. What's, what's new in shortcuts for iOS this year? Shortcuts has gotten another refinement of the design, so it's... In many ways, running shortcuts is a lot smoother. Um, you can access them from the widgets on the home screen, which is really great. There are shortcuts for Apple Watch, which is very, very cool. Automations have gotten even better, and there's uh, maybe 25 or maybe more actions. We'll see as more betas come out, but there's they're adding a lot of new features that I think will make the whole experience a lot more cohesive. So I saw you post your, well, I don't know if that, I don't know if I can even call it a home screen. It was a screen that contained more widgets than I've ever seen cataloged into more folders than I've ever seen. Yes. Um, those were some of my home screen experiments ahead of iOS 14 because previously there was no such thing as folders or any type of organization in shortcuts. And so I was forced by necessity of using shortcuts way, way too much to put them onto the home screen it completely in folders. But what they've actually introduced now in iOS 14 is folders inside the app. So I've gone through and pretty much destroyed everything I had before and started over. <laughs> and I think I have 100 folders now, which is a little bit much. Wow. Now you can do very simple things just like picking up multiple shortcuts and searching for them and moving them and stuff like that. So that I was like <laughs> celebrating during the keynote because folders <laughs> for me have are like, I've wanted that for five years since when it was workflow. So that's like... A finally for me. <laughs> do you have any advice for people who want to organize their shortcuts? Like, do you have a unified organizational principle for doing things like that? I use color, actually. And it kind of shocked me once I actually got them sorted into colors. And it took a while to sort of decide what I wanted to use for what. But after a while, now I have this really strong association and I can just tell throughout my library, like, oh, this red one is either a calendar thing or for uh, YouTube. Pretty simple associations, but... Once you pick, it does start to work really well. And then within that, I have, um, I try to use custom icons and sentences that are verbs. So if I'm asking Siri to run the shortcut, I want it to be like, open my video tasks or something like that. And you mentioned, uh, you know, Apple introduced a whole new style of widgets this year based on complications, but they're, they're really handy and you can put them almost anywhere on the home screen and Siri shortcuts uh, blessedly are part of them. How How is that figured into how you put shortcuts on your home screen, if at all? Um, it's great. I am loving the widgets. I think they're very cool. There's some interactivity that I wish was there, but they do open so yeah. fast. Um, and at least for me, <laughs> shortcuts has sort of special privileges because in general, when you run shortcuts now, they're using a compact UI that kind of pops over from the top, regardless of if you're in the shortcuts app or running it from the home screen through that widget experience. Um, so now you can kind of have your set of widgets. And one of the cool things is you can stack the shortcuts widget behind another app and then sort of switch to the widget folder that's behind there with the shortcuts for that app. So I'm probably gonna have shortcuts <laughs> widgets hidden behind every single one of my app widgets. <laughs> um, it's gonna get a little intense, but it's fun. Shortcuts all the way down. Exactly. <laughs> And you also mentioned that they've changed the way automation or maybe improved the way that automation works this year. Yes. So one of the major improvements is that the time-based automations are actually automatic now, which they kind of weren't before. That was one of the major criticisms. 
Um, so now you can have a shortcut run on any type of schedule. And as long as it doesn't require interaction, it can work in the background. And then they also have new triggers too. Okay, so what's an example of a new trigger? Two of the new triggers are email and messages. So you can set it that whenever I get an email from Renee Ritchie, maybe it sends me a notification so I can make sure to respond to that immediately or something like that. Well, I like it because VIP is still constrained to mail and I've been asking for years to have it in messages because I want to be able to have more control. Like some messages like, like carrier spam, I don't need that shown to me, but if it is you know, a business contact or someone in my family, it's important, I want that shown. And this sounds like it gives me just that kind of control finally over my own destiny. Yeah, exactly. You could even do things like flash the light if somebody sends a certain message. So that could be like a physical way in your environment to respond. It's like, oh, my kids are messaging me. I need to respond to this one right away. It's the red lights flash and it goes, awooga, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's Out of coffee, out of coffee. There's got to be some good alarm ones there. <laughs> so you also mentioned that uh, shortcuts in watchOS are now like peanut butter and chocolate. I'm just put words in your mouth there. But uh, how is that working for you so far? It is excellent. Now pretty much... Everything that you can do, again, that it, if it opens an app, it won't necessarily work on the watch because you're using the watch. But a lot of the cool scripting things that you can do works really well. Like you can have multiple step shortcuts that run from your watch or just a single tap and then it'll do something for you. And then even they can be set on the watch face as complications so that you can run your shortcuts just with one tap there. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Do you look at it sort of uh, like as doing shortcuts on the watch or as a way to remote control shortcuts on your iPhone or once again, a little bit of both? Um, I think a little bit of both. They did say in the developer sessions that shortcuts do run standalone on the Apple Watch. So if you have a cellular watch and you leave your phone at home, it should be able to connect and do everything it normally does. Um, but then there's also even ways where you can use new watch app actions to control the Apple Watch itself from the phone, so a little bit of reverse actually, where you can have your shortcuts change your watch oh. face and things like that now, which is really cool. Combine that with the time-based automations and you can have your watch face update in the morning or at night or based on other triggers like that, so. Anything new for HomePod or AirPods or just in general that we haven't touched on yet? I think a lot of the features of HomePod and AirPods actually came last year, but I didn't even really make a great video about this, that a lot of the scripting stuff that you can do with your shortcuts all work from HomePod and AirPods already. But I think the big thing that's gonna be coming this year is that developers are gonna have more power with their shortcuts. So they'll be able to do more and have interactivity in that new compact UI that shows things, just simple things like images or subtext yeah. that will be more useful, but they can also run the power of their shortcut from their app. So, which basically just means they have more memory and then they'll be able to do more powerful things or access stuff that they couldn't before. So really once iOS 14 drops, I think we're gonna see a lot of new cool shortcuts from apps. And it's, again, with all of the automations and Apple Watch stuff, it's, it's, there's too much to process all at once. So I'm glad we do have the summer until then to figure out a little bit more because there's gonna be a lot of cool opportunities. Is there anything still big that's missing that you'd like to see either flushed out in the betas or maybe come next year or the year after? Any, any major stumbling blocks left for you? I think the one thing that was a bit of a sham having organized all of my shortcuts on the home screen in folders is that when you run a shortcut from the home screen, it still opens the app. I'm not sure if this is like a technical detail because in general, when you tap things on the home screen, they open. So it would be a little bit different compared to those widgets, but I do wish you could add a shortcut from the home screen and then tapping it would run it with the compact UI. That would be good. Thanks, Matthew. And make sure you check him out on YouTube, Twitter, and the web. And then check out Nebula, the supremely cool new streaming video service I'm building with a group of like-minded, educationy creator friends. People like Sam from Half is Interesting, Tirzu, Jordan Harrod, Real Science, and many, many more. Nebula is just a place where we can try out new things without having to worry about the tyranny of the algorithm or being demonetized or just being told to stay in our respective YouTube lanes. Also, there are amazing originals like Tom Scott's Money and Alex Goes Bananas, which you might just see me in sooner rather than later. Also, the working title series where a bunch of us take a look at a bunch of our favorite TV shows, something that would just never work with the algorithm but works fantastically well on Nebula. And it's also a place where we can post all of our regular videos, videos just like this one, but without any ads or any sponsorships at all, 
In point of fact, new ad-free, sponsor-free content goes up not just every week, but every day, multiple times a day, which is great if you're just tired of waiting for all the other online services to update. There are even special and extended versions of our videos, like I've been posting the full-length versions of my interviews on Nebula as well, 45-minute chats with iJustine, Brian Tong, Walt Mossberg, and more to come. And again, things that would just totally get buried here by the algorithm. And now, because Nebula comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to its thousands of documentaries and series by people like David Attenborough and Chris Hatfield, which right now is discounted all the way down to just $14.97 a year. Yeah, you heard that right. A year. Seriously, it's the better best deal in streaming today. Just go to curiositystream.com slash Ritchie for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well. Enter the promo code Renee Ritchie to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks, CuriosityStream. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my iOS 14 playlist above and see you next video.